Okay, here we go. Hello, Leo. This is Terra Illumination with your love and relationship report for January 2018. Okay, so you, you've probably done all these tarot things before. You know the drill. Watch for your sun, moon, and rising. That's the convention. It seems to work pretty well. And then you can reinterpret however you want. Okay, it's your reading. Terra Illumination is just giving you a perspective and a reflection so that you can figure stuff out for yourselves okay now uh, we're going to use this crucible spread okay so it allows for you dear leo a significant other a chosen one conscious relationship and we allow for the third party the relationship itself which has an integrity an energy and a life of its own okay so you know, in a healthy situation, of course, you conduct everything through the relationship as opposed to face on one on one, which is, you know, I would guess the d default be behavior for most folks. But we'll just see how it goes. OK, Leo. Now, uh, no jumpers, no flyers, no oracles, no reversals. Cards were already well shuffled in advance, but I'm just going to the last second. So you're a witness. And I just want to bring something in here for a moment. Hold on. Stay there. Trying to help as much as I can, people. All right, so we've been using these charts a lot recently, but uh, it's still applicable. You, Leo, have uh, just come out of a two or three year cycle, Saturn and Sagittarius, where you might have felt a lot of changes and limitations and growth and learning, some quite painful uh, when it comes to your love life and relationships, okay? And now you've come out the other side and things are changing. There's no going back. And so all the wisdom that you now have is something that you can carry forward with you into this new chapter. And also, so that's going to turn out over here. So we're going to move into this massive new moon, okay? Capricorn towards the middle of January. And then from then on, it's going to be the start of a really big cycle for Saturn and Sagittarius. So this is a big, like, uh, window of opportunity here for big life changes going on, lifestyle changes, habits, health, uh, work practices, service to others, service to the planet, and getting, you know, really like stark awakenings perhaps when it comes to, uh, you know, the day-to-day -day realities of taking care of yourself, issues, health issues might be here, healthy habits need to be nurtured, unhealthy habits are going to be very exposed and going to have to be dealt with okay so how that's going to affect love and relationship we're not sure let's just see what the cards indicating for now i just wanted to point that out normally we don't do the astrology here but it's such an important new moon for everybody it's the capricorn new moon the middle of january all right so we're just kind of like factoring that in in the background as like an energy field that's going to affect everybody in one way or another and for you leo kind of in the way that we just mentioned all right so let's go let's go let's go let's go for it well that was weird i need to check something i don't do jumpers flyers and oracles i'm very picky about that let's see hold on okay it was a jumper and i've cleared it and now i'm going to shuffle again okay I like things to be really, really simple and really, really clear. There is enough confusion around as it is out there. I want to get things, you know, comprehensive, digestible, understandable. Okay, let's go for it. This is well shuffled now. Sorry, I really like to lock it down here. Okay, there we go. That's good. Let's uh, let's clear this up. All right, this is going to be you, okay, Leo, the love energy that you radiate, okay? This is going to be the significant other, and their love energy that they radiate. This is going deep inside of you, okay? You might not have an awareness of this energy. Same with the other, deep inside of them. And here we are at the relationship itself. Now, hopefully you can already see this is the crucible, okay? There's you, the other, then there's the relationship in the crucible, is a very, very tough, uh, in, in its ultimate form, is a very, very tough 
container that can withstand the tremendous pressures that uh, how, how people have to endure in the context of a loving relationship as we intimate and as we separate, intimate and separate, always, nonstop, that never stops. And so in a very healthy relationship, the crucible is very strong and both parties invest heavily in the relationship itself as opposed to relating one-on-one -on -one and putting all of this on autopilot. So over here would be the prospects, the momentum, and over here we're going to look at circumstantial energy. This would be what, you know, I like to think of it as weather, and, you know, Leo, you're typically brave and courageous, and you would just face it and look at it and say, okay, we're going to do this and make the best of the weather. So what have we got? Okay, well, <laughs> so it's definitely like, okay, you could say this is to do with the passions, you know, if you want to. But it's also to do with, I feel a lot, a lot about expression, just like your circumstantial energy around you in the relationships, in the environment of the relationship uh, could be like getting you all fired up in ways that you're not used to. This is kind of almost like over the top energy where um, you might be feeling very deeply loved in a you know, very obvious, maybe physical way, or you may be feeling the desire for that to happen, or maybe you're feeling like that towards the other, or just towards anybody. There's a lot of like passionate energy here that is itching to be expressed, and that wants to be uh, understood and put out there. And it's understandable. Now, how that translates into the reading, we'll see in a moment, but this is also an encouragement for you, Leo, to be yourself and let your, you know, let your freak flag, flag blah, 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 freak flag fly a little bit. You know, if you're feeling really fired up about things and you can sense these big new shifts and new changes and you want to get in the group for that stuff, then go for it. OK, OK. The whole idea is to make full advantage of these cycles as they happen, not be overwhelmed or debilitated by this massive new Capricorn energy thing going on, especially the Saturn part of the cycle. All right, so let's have a look. What's going on with you? Okay, now this card has showed up in another reading somewhere. So, Leo, you might be like, if you looked in the mirror right now, you might be figuring out what the belief is going on with me, my life, my world. I'm seeing myself as an enigma to myself. I don't even know who I am anymore. What am I really? This is where you could be feeling like <clears throat> what you're radiating is just, I guess, I, 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 feel, I feel like it's very, very pure and it's very, very well intended. And there is no intention of, let's say, willfulness, okay? Where the thing is, like, this can be very willful energy. This can very, be very, very expressive, like, you're like full on going for it type energy here. But this, this is in your surroundings. You might be in a, in a very, very dynamic environment of change and shift. Like, you know, when the weather changes, whether it's for good or bad is irrelevant. When it changes and it changes big time, that can be very stimulating. Okay. And that can trigger up all sorts of new perceptions about what, is going on here? Where is my life going? Where is it heading? How am I going to set my sails going forward? How am I going to like <clears throat> present myself to the world from here on as a Leo with all of this <clears throat> going on around me? What am I supposed to do? And so you might not really know. <clears throat> you might not really have any answers right now. You might be feeling deep inside that what is happening is almost beyond understanding. It maybe doesn't even make any sense, but it doesn't matter because you're still holding your ground as a, like a, let's like, almost like pure soul energy here, where, you know, if there are big winds of change happening around you and you feel it, you're holding yourself uh, true to your soul nature, even if you don't really know what's going on. This is the energy I feel of you being very, very pure very, very, let's say, loving towards yourself and towards, towards the whole world. You know, this is like, I feel it's like universal love energy without having to shout about it or, you know, boast about it or anything. It's just living it out by example, where you literally are living the energy of that serene goddess 
doesn't matter whether you're male or female watching this. This is the energy of that serene goddess type uh, persona. Well, not persona, but the actual soul energy. And it can be, in some ways, awkward for others because they might not have any idea about how to read you because you're like keeping it all to yourself. You're just being you, being your pure self at the center of you without having to justify it or explain that to anybody. And if they don't get it, then that's their problem. Okay. So, you know, don't deny this. Be aware that this is existing. Be aware that this is what you are pulsing right now. And uh, it's in some ways, it's hard to tell what would come back from that because, you know, with the laws of attraction, you know, what you put out comes back there. So if you're radiating a certain type of super high frequency, mysterious type of love energy, maybe we don't really know what's going to like come back at you. Let's have a look at the other. Okay. Well, they might be trying to figure it out themselves because they might be. I feel a couple things here with this significant other. They might be struggling with, let's say, the, I don't want to, I, I don't want to label it, but the appearances of what's going on because they might not be able to read you and it puts them in their own, let's say, mysterious kind of condition where they don't have a choice except to, uh, tune into their own dream energy, so to speak, uh, because you're already like representative of like divinity here. So it's in some ways, it's very, very complimentary for you, Leo. You might be relating to someone who's in some ways very much on your wavelength, but they're also becoming kind of confused and a bit of a mystery to themselves. Part of them has beautiful dreams, desires, and goals, and a very, very deep, strong connection to heaven. Uh, in the way that they are very, very, let's say, like super hypersensitive, and they are constantly almost in this dreamlike state where they are constantly receiving messages and energy from around them, people, places, things, activities, the, co the collective, uh, news, radio, music, art, and they absorb that like, uh, like a sea anemone. And it's very, very beautiful. Uh, but at times they might be struggling about what to do with it because it's sort of like that. The it's like the it's like the energy of, of of dreamland being lost in dreamland where it's so beautiful but it's also very disorienting. You know those kind of dreams that you can have. Now this is where this is the other person, okay, Leo, but they might be so like out there that their dreamland is their reality. Their dreams are their reality and there's no difference from that for them. So that puts you kind of in an awkward position like, well, well, what am I supposed to do if they're like made out of clouds and dreams and uh, art and music and they have their own like dreamland going on, where does that leave me? And they're uh, all up there living their dream, tapping into the energy of heaven. Some people think of this as the genius card, where you just open yourself laying down on the ground and you stare up to heaven and you say, dear angels, tell me what I need to know right now. What do I need to make me happy right now? And then they listen and they respond and they just go do it. If that means they have to go for a walk, they do it. If it means they have to do something artistic, they do it. If it means they have to you know, go to bed early or have a drink or whatever it is, then they go to, go and do it. And it might not make any sense to anyone else except them. So in a, in a, in a very kind of strange way, you're both, it feels to me like you're both like very enigmatic characters in relationship with each other to the point where it's almost like you have no idea what's going on with each other because what appears to be real is very different from what's actually happening. It makes it in some ways difficult to navigate, especially if there's these big shifts and changes in weather and energy going on right now. Like, what are we going to do with all this, Leo? Where does this leave you? Where does this take you? Okay, let's have a look deep down. Okay. Now, these are like really big cards here for you, Leo. So it might be feeling, again, with that massive wave, like you're getting swept along by fate to the point where 
gosh, do I really have any say in what's going on here? Am I dealing, am I Leo dealing with someone who's so far out there that it's beyond, they're beyond me? And is it turning into delusion? Is this person in some kind of delusional relationship with me? Are they off in their own clouds, which has nothing to do with me? What's going on? But so deep down, it puts you in a position where it's almost like you can't rely on them anymore. You can't really factor on them for anymore in the traditional understandings of the way a relationship would work. So you have to turn inwards and find the answers within where like the, the animal part of yourself, which contains all the passion, all the raw desire, the lust, the, 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 the missions and the visions that you want to express in your life in this world going forward from this moment. How do you put that in alignment with what's actually happening, which is more kind of like a spiritual journey here? And you might not be used to that. You might not be used to being this kind of energy, Leo, but it's almost like you don't have any choice to, um, you know, start to resonate this way because this is sort of how they are. And so it puts you in this awkward position like, hey, wait a minute. Are you trying to tell me, Tara Illumination, that I'm heading on a spiritual journey where what is happening in our relationship, which doesn't make any sense to me? is actually exactly what I need for me to go on to my spiritual growth, spiritual evolution, uh, putting my, let's say, all of this aside. In other words, how can this work for me, 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 me? Not, sorry, I don't, I don't want to say that you're like a self-centered egomaniac. What I'm trying to say is, what am I supposed to do with all this amazing energy here? And it feels like here, it's just like deep, deep in your soul. It's just like, oh, no, I have to bring this into a higher way of being. And you're learning that, I feel, from this significant other. Because they're just going off and being who they are. Okay? But it puts you in this situation. Because this is your reading. It's not theirs. It's not a joint couple's reading. It's all about you, Leo, in the context with a significant other and the circumstantial energy that's around you. So you might be feeling these big shifts and changes and it's pushing you to be like, take things from an even a higher perspective, like the spiritual things in ways that you might have never even like, you know, even wanted before. You know, it's all of a sudden, well, what's happening to me at the soul level? It's like having to go to this, you know, bringing yourself in alignment with the will of heaven. That's what I often feel with this card. So it's putting the ego aside about what do I want, but what is good for us? What is good for the relationship? What is good for my soul journey? What is good for my healing? With that Capricorn stuff, sixth house, it's going to be very, very much about healing, divine healing from the great beyond, so to speak. And it's going to be a long-term journey, three-year pattern, okay? So let's get used to it. Let's get you in alignment right now. Deep down inside of them, what's going on? Well, in some ways, they might be just like so happy with the way things are because they might see their relationship with you as something completely different to what you perceive the relationship to be. You're over here um, being this, feeling this deep inside, and all charged up and fired up as you sense huge winds of change coming here, big shifts happening for you. Meanwhile, they're over here over here in their wonderful dreamland, almost fantasy land from your perspective, you might be thinking like, I've totally lost this person. I have no idea who you are anymore. You're out in cuckoo land and I'm over here trying to figure this stuff out. What am I supposed to do? And deep inside of them, they're actually really happy about this. They're glad that things are the way they are and that they are able to share their true like dreamlike artistic nature with you but it's more like with the world it's almost like this has nothing to do with you or nothing to do with the relationship it's just that this is what's happening with them right now in the context of their relationship with you so that they are seeing like some of their in some ways like almost like dreams coming true like when you tap into the energy of heaven and you really allow it to flow through you it's the einstein thing it's like where you just close your eyes and you dream it you don't have to know anything 
And then all of a sudden the answer comes, poof, there it is. And you learned through your dreams. You didn't have to go to college. Okay. Uh, sorry, I took that to an extreme, but it feels really, really good inside of them. And they are more and more eager to stay on that path and go on that path because it feels so good. And they want to share that with you. They want to share that with the world. They want to share that with their family. They want to share their divinity with you and the family and the group, their buddies, their mates, their people, the world, the collective. Okay. That's what I feel here for you, Leo. It just might make you feel like, what the bleep is going on? I have, I don't get you at all. But they're there. That's the context. That's the, that's what's happening in the context of the relationship. What's happening at the core here? Okay. Now, if with the devil card here, it might feel as though this is such a huge change for you, Leo. And this is such a huge new perception and awakening that you're sensing in them, the significant other, that it puts the relationship itself. I'm, I'm just going to say this and get it out there and then you'll understand in a moment. It puts the relationship in a state of uh, going to the extremes of jeopardy where it's just like, okay, I'm just going straight with the imagery here. It's just like, whoa, whoa, whoa. We're so far apart. It's just like, but no, there's still a relationship. Ding. Okay. And you reach the end, like the chain, like there's you bound to them. There's them bound to you. And it is like a chain. Okay. It might not be love. It might be more like circumstantial. I'm just going to use the word like, I don't want to say hostage or bondage or anything like that. It feels too extreme, but like the linking of two beings where it's a very, very strong connection, but it might not be like viable as a love relationship connection anymore. It might be just more like a, a binding where all of this stuff that's going on with them, fine. All this new stuff that's happening on with you here, which might be taking you to the extremes of your abilities to cope with them. And so it puts the relationship in a very strained type of situation where literally the bonds of relationship are being taken to their limits, taken to the breaking point. To the, you have to consider, is this a, a, a relationship that I want going forward? Do I want to be, uh, let's say, held hostage to this relationship dynamic? Do I want to hold on so tight uh, to this relationship dynamic that it's actually very limiting for myself or very limiting for them? Or do I want to release myself from this type of uh hostage situation and that's something that needs to be really considered very carefully now i used some language there which might have been a bit over the top i don't want to scare you leo but you might be really feeling it deep inside your soul and the way forward would be like i need to liberate myself from this relationship and for their benefit and for your benefit and allowing yourself to evolve to the higher level spiritually. This is still your relationship, your weather conditions, okay, how it works for you. So I'm just trying to interpret that for you, for your best benefit, to understand how you might be very, very deeply linked and bonded, which you might think is love, but it's more like a dependency, a very, very heavy, tight dependency from which liberation and joy and happiness uh, can be sought and perhaps needs to come into play. Let's have a look. Where does this take us? Okay. So let's just say the prospects here are like if it becomes starkly aware that you're more in a situation of being bound. In other words, the chains of marriage, for example, as opposed to the liberty of marriage. We have to understand when people form bonds, especially very tight, intimate bonds, uh, if it's a one-on-one -on -one thing, like when people get married, for example, it can be the worst decision you've ever made in your life. And it turns to, into a long-term prison sentence and the exact opposite of what you would want. And then some people, if they get it right, the marriage is a very liberating, beautiful environment in which both parties can blossom okay, and grow in the context of the crucible with each other. But what I'm sensing here for you, Leo, is that there's an awareness that's going to start to unfold soon where the energy of binding 
is going to become very, very evident. And you have to decide, is that what I really, really want? And when it becomes evident, you might feel it is very painful in the form of loss. Because if you actually start to sense the slipping away or the breaking away of chains, or whether you decide to break the chains or if they decide to break the chain, then it puts you or the relationship in a state of grief, sorrow, and tragedy, either for yourself, for them, or for both of you. But it's also an indication that, you know, life moves on. And then there's a whole new chapter unfolding here, a brand new little two of cups, way, way in the distance. Well, way back here. But remember, energy flows where attention goes. So if you need to be focused on this attention right now, then deal with it. It's not the end of the world. It could be very, very liberating. In other words, if you have to break the chain, you break the chain and allow for the love to flow again. Okay. And you don't allow for to be in, enmeshed or swallowed up in misery and grief and sorrow forever. You see it as a form of liberation, okay? Releasing and letting yourself go onto a higher spiritual journey, releasing and letting the other go on their journey, which is what they want, and living through the, the, the breaking of the chains if it feels sorrowful, and then allowing that this is part of the big, exciting new momentum for you, okay? Remember the two cups there, the two little cups, cups of love, it's like the two of cups very much about deep deep love okay so it's not the end of the world this is something potentially very beautiful okay thank you so much oh, i think i talked way too much here it's a very long reading sorry about that so go back reinterpret for yourselves however you want thank you so much leo bye bye